Protecting habitat is the most effective way to conserve the majority of species. This is true for globally threatened species and for species that may become threatened because they are geographically concentrated in a limited number of sites. An example of a geographically concentrated species is one that has a restricted range, meaning that it is found only within one small area of the world. Such species are more likely than those with large ranges to become threatened or even to go extinct. Imagine a species that depends on forest. If it is confined to a small area, it is more likely that a threat such as logging could lead to decline or extinction. This category also includes congregatory species, or species that gather in huge numbers in a single place at a single time. If a threat eliminates even one site where such species congregate, the global population of that species could decline significantly. Globally threatened species and geographically concentrated species are referred to as trigger species. Places containing trigger species are called Key Biodiversity Areas or KBAs. These sites of global conservation significance represent our targets at the site level. Key Biodiversity Areas are places known to contain trigger species. How do we identify KBAs? The methods for identifying KBAs were developed over 20 years ago by BirdLife International. Since then, this process has been applied by many organizations around the world. The first step is to gather as much information as possible about where trigger species are found and what types of habitat they need. This work is being done at the national or regional level where information is collected from field surveys, museums, published literature, databases, and scientists. Experts then map these data points to determine the location of KBAs. For example, say our KBA trigger species are a mammal, a fish, an amphibian, and a bird. Where we have point data for these species, we can identify KBAs. In some cases, data are historical, or we only suspect the presence of trigger species in an area. Such sites are identified as research priorities, called candidate KBAs. If field surveys confirm the presence of a trigger species, these sites would also become KBAs, or priorities for conservation. Once we know generally where the KBAs are, we need to draw boundaries around each one. This is more complicated than it appears, since by definition, KBAs need to consider management needs, as well as the ecological needs of the trigger species. It is important where possible that the KBA is managed as a single unit, such as a protected area. So, in most cases, we need to look at both biological and political information, as well as threats such as forest loss. We usually look first at the needs of the trigger species and exclude areas that do not provide for those needs. Then, we need to try to ensure that the site can be managed for conservation.